Greetings and welcome. This is the Gadget 360 show, but should I just call it what it should be? It's Gadget 360 at a completely different pace. We are doing a CES special. I've already told you last week also, CES is the world's biggest technology event. Now, it's been a little bit muted, but this year it came out in absolute flying colors. In fact, I think some of the innovation, some of the announcements, some of the stuff that happened out there was insane. I'll give you a very, very quick look. We'll do TVs, now, the biggest QLED TVs from TCL measure measuring 98 inches. Sony's newest and biggest mini LED TVs, high senses entirely refreshed, 2022 TV lineup. Then we'll move on to laptops from Lenovo's ThinkPad Z series, ThinkPad X1 lineup, Acer's newest gaming and productivity laptops. And then we'll move on to cars, BMW's electric SUV, a concept EV from Mercedes, Sony's entry into commercially producing cars. I hope it happens. I hope it's just not a prototype. And then we'll do some wild and wacky, innovative, fascinating stuff from there. Let's get started. Today's CES special. Let's start our exclusive CES coverage with TVs, one of the biggest gadgets you will buy. And this year, CES was absolutely on fire in terms of TVs. TVs have really been reborn in the last year or two. So lots and lots of TVs to show you. TCL's brand new 98-inch 4K TV. Hisense refreshed the entire lineup of TVs. All the models upgraded with full array, local dimming, 120 hertz 4K gaming, lots more. Sony announced their refreshed lineup of Bravia TVs. TVs, and there was so much more happening in the world of TVs. Take a look. TVs are more important now than ever before. They are the source of our daily fill of entertainment, even more so after the pandemic. And with so much dependence on them, it only makes sense that all the tech companies in the world would do everything possible to make them better. Better in terms of options, sizes, backlight, colors, and the technology that makes it work together. And at CES, we saw some of the most amazing televisions ever. Some we covered last week, and here are some of the others that we loved. TCL introduced one of the biggest QLED TVs that we have seen. This is the TCL 98-inch XL QLED TV. It is meant to bring the theatre experience to one's home with its massive, massive size. From the little that TCL revealed during the show, this TV comes with four HDMI ports with two of them supporting 4K output at 120Hz. On the software side, it comes with Google TV, a smart platform meant to act as a hub for all the subscription services the user has. And with everything it can do, the TV will be priced under $8,000, approximately 6 lakh rupees. Hisense went a step ahead and upgraded their entire lineup of TVs at CES. The Hisense ULED TV lineup now has full array local dimming zones for higher contrasts and deeper blacks. They will come with Dolby Vision IQ for more details in shadows and highlights. The speakers also come with Dolby Atmos audio and the TVs will have HDR10 Plus certification, 4K quantum dot color, game mode plus for low latency gaming and picture quality optimization for the games the user plays. The software on board is Google TV. The higher-end models will add 4K output at 120Hz, variable refresh rate and a mini-LED backlight for even better contrast levels and even more details in highlights and shadows. And with new TVs everywhere, how can Sony be left out, especially with what was in store? With all the TVs being refreshed, the most significant ones we saw were the Sony Bravia Z9K 8K Mini LED TV and X95K 4K Mini LED TV. Mini LED is a comprehensive upgrade over LED LCD panels. The local dimming zones are exponentially more due to much smaller LEDs populating the same screen size. It results in extremely high contrast levels and a better dynamic range. The TVs get better audio too. Rather than going the old two-channel route and speakers fire from one particular direction, the sound is spread across the entirety of the panel. This makes it more immersive and makes it seem like the sound coming out of the TV is firing at you from all directions. The TVs also come with Netflix Adaptive Calibrated Mode. All the titles on Netflix when played on the TVs are processed by the Cognitive XR processor on board. 
It optimizes the content to look exactly the way the studio wanted the viewer to see it as the TVs can adapt the content to the light in the room. When it comes to gaming, whenever the PS5 is connected to the TVs, the picture quality and output are optimized for games. Add 120 hertz variable refresh rate and low latency to that and it will make the best possible experience for a gamer. As we said earlier, TVs are more important than ever in the times that we live. And going by everything seen at CES, 2022 will be an amazing year for those looking to buy a TV. Alright, TVs, TVs and a lot of those, but laptops, the other big hero of 2021. Lenovo introduced the ThinkPad Z series. These laptops are meant to compete with XPS lineups and MacBooks. Very different from the normal ThinkPad and lack some of the signature feature, but there's a lot of lifestyle upgrades. Then the ThinkPad X1 lineup was upgraded with the focus on hybrid employees. Acer introduced the new Nitro 5 gaming laptop, so lots happening in the laptop segment too. Laptops have integrated into our lives even more than before. Source of entertainment, work, leisure and productivity, the demands from a laptop increase every year. And accordingly, the people who make them have to step up. And they have stepped up alright. With all the laptops covered last week, here are some of the other ones that stood out, specifically from Lenovo and Acer. Lenovo has involved the ThinkPad lineup. Not only have they upgraded the ones that were already there, but they have started an entirely new series focused on the young generation today, the Gen Z, the ThinkPad Z series that is, available in two form factors. They look a lot more like the standard Ultrabooks rather than a ThinkPad. Both the laptops come with a great display with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and severe lack of bezels. Lenovo developed custom Ryzen Pro U series processors with AMD exclusive to these laptops. There is a haptic trackpad and just two USB-C ports for I.O. Again, just a ThinkPad by the name, but an Ultrabook by its nature. Apart from the new Z series, the X1 Carbon, Yoga and Nano series got the upgrades. The changes have been made with remote employees in mind. There is an upgraded webcam, 360 degree far field mics, better security, 12th gen Intel processors and LP DDR5 RAM. While the Yoga gets the 4K OLED display, the Carbon will get the 2.8K one. But one of the most interesting products was the ThinkBook Plus Gen 3. This is not just a common laptop. It is a laptop with an 8-inch touch-enabled secondary display right beside the keyboard, apart from the massive 17.3-inch primary display. It can be used for anything. Writing notes with a stylus that can be stored inside the laptop, putting in distractions like Twitter and Spotify, mirroring a smartphone display, or extending an app from the primary display. Imagine a notepad on the right side of the keyboard that is synced in with your laptop. Acer's announcements might not be as fascinating, but they will serve as a fine refinement for the current lineup of laptops, starting with the Nitro 5 series gaming laptops. The new versions offer options between a QHD or a 1080p panel, 15.6 inch or 17.2 inch panel, 12th gen Intel or AMD Ryzen 6000 series processors, and GPUs going up to NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti. The productivity focused SwiftX line of laptops also got refreshed. There are options between a 14-inch or a 16-inch form factor. Both versions will have Quad HD 16x10 displays and 12th gen Intel processors. While the 16-inch gets Intel's own Arc GPU, the 14-inch maxes out at NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti. The demands from laptops have increased, and if CES is something to go by, which it is, companies are stepping up their game to meet all of these demands. Now let's talk about cars, the biggest gadgets in the world. I think CES should be called Car Electronic Show also. CES still, right? BM introduced a new concept car. The paint on the car comes with color changing mechanism. It does that with e-ink. So you know what you use on your Kindle devices? Well, that's what the car is made of. So you can go from change colors between white, gray and black. So if you make a mistake with the car you bought, don't like the color, well, press a button. Mercedes came up with their Vision EQX X concept car. The car is focused on extreme efficiency, range exceeding 1,000 kilometers. You know how far you can drive and come back? Okay. And Sony introduced their second version of the car they introduced last year. But will Sony ever, ever actually produce cars? Well, that and a whole lot more answered in our Cars from CES segment. The EVs are taking over the world. And as that happens, shows like CES provide an insight into what the future holds 
for this already fascinating segment. And the insight we got this year is already mind-blowing. Here are some of the announcements that were the most exciting. Let's start with the first headliner, the color-changing car from BMW. The new iX series was on display throughout the show, but the variant that caught the most eyes was the one turning white, then grey, then black. The concept version of the iX series was coated with a paint made from a technology very similar to what one sees on an Amazon Kindle. The new paint relies on e-ink to enable the color changing mechanism with the press of a button. The changing colors do serve a function. When turned white, the car reflects the sunlight resulting in less heat generated in the car during the summers. And when turned black, the car absorbs the heat from the sun so the car can be warm even during a cold winter day. Apart from this, the car does have regular EV features too. Two electric motors, 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.6 seconds and 450 km of range. Then comes the Mercedes Vision EQXX. This serves fascination not through a new paint job or some outrageous design choice, but by sheer efficiency, albeit for a concept car. Mercedes set its sight on unprecedented efficiency with this one. The EQXX comes with a thousand kilometer of range. Yep, that is correct. And everything about the car contributes to that, be it with aerodynamics, battery or materials. The car was developed with digital tools and simulations to test it in every possible way. The battery has been redesigned from the ground up to match the single digit kilowatt hour per 100 km stat. The roof of the car has solar panels to power several functions inside the car. The design of the car prioritizes aerodynamics. The second focus of the car is sustainability and that's exactly what we see in its efficient power consumption and luxurious yet biodegradable and animal-free materials used in the interior. The car is supposed to be the most sustainable and efficient car from Mercedes, even though just as a concept. And it is an absolute spectacle while being all of that. Apart from the legacy automakers, we had Sony adding to their last year's surprise with the Vision 01 EV. This year, they went two steps above and not only revealed a new car, but also some interesting plans they have for this year. They revealed Vision 02, an EV focused on safety, connectivity and software. It comes with 40 different sensors inside and outside of the car for advanced safety features. It always stays connected to 5G for better in-car entertainment and consistently evolving software that will receive over-the-air updates to add more features to the car. And the interesting plans for this year include the establishment of Sony Mobility Inc., a division of Sony that will develop, produce and commercially sell cars. Yes, Sony will be entering the automotive industry. EVs widely available today already feel like a bucket filled with the future, but when we take a second look at everything we saw at CES, it easily makes it seem like a small drop rather than a bucket, and it easily becomes a holistically more exciting prospect than ever before. Let's take a quick break right now on the show. When we come back, lots more happening. Now let's move on to all our innovative and fascinating things out there. From the PlayStation VR 2, TCL introduced the second generation of micro LED smart glasses. You know, these glasses can simulate an experience of watching content on a 148 inch screen from just 10 feet away. Directly connects to a phone to play content and Razer came out with their very new Zypher Pro Mask. So lots happening out here. Even with everything we have shown you so far, 
there are still some extremely innovative and amazing concepts that we are yet to cover. A pair of smart glasses, a voice amplifying mask, a gaming PC built into a desk, and a new PlayStation from Sony. And in the next few minutes, you will know everything about all of these products and concepts. TCI introduced the second generation of their smart glasses called the Nextwear Air. They are much more comfortable and lighter than the previous gen. They come with micro LED screens on each lens which can simulate an experience of watching content on a 140 inch screen from 10 feet away. The smart glasses can be easily connected to a phone to watch movies, shows or play games. One can also attach it to a laptop and use the smart glasses as a large monitor. And it is as simple as that. Attach the wire to the device and you're good to go. And talking about another screen right in front of your eyes, the announcement from Sony. Sony has officially revealed that the next version of the PlayStation VR called the PlayStation VR 2, obviously, is under development. While no actual hardware was showcased, we got to see what the new controllers will look like and what upgrades will the new VR headset get, and a look at one of the new games being developed for it. The new headset will come with deeper immersion, new sensory features, enhanced controls tracking, upgraded visual fidelity, and subtle haptic feedback from the headset based on in-game actions. The output will be 4K and users will get a 110 degree field of view. And one of the special games under development is Horizon Call of the Mountains. Shifting gears from virtual reality to something that is meant to be used in actual reality, we got a look at the new mask from Razer called the Zephyr Pro. The mask comes with two cylinders with fans and RGB in each of them. Both cylinders have filters which need to be replaced after 3 days of use. The entire mechanism works well enough to offer 99% bacterial filtration efficiency, which is 4% more than a surgical mask. It comes with padding around the mouth for comfortable use, and right under the cylinders are speakers which amplify the voice of the user to save it from being muffled under the mask. And for the fun of it, users can alter how their voice will sound from those speakers, so they can sound like Batman if they want. The mask will be sold for $200 with 33 filters inside the box. Another fascinating concept from Razer is Project Sophia. The concept consists of a desk that is entirely a PC. A modular, customizable PC with a 65-inch integrated display. The top of the desk is supposed to be a fully touch-enabled display that can be used to input different tasks on the screen or actively keeping track of certain stats from the PC. All of the components can be upgraded by being switched out from under the desk. It is truly a marvel to look at and a concept you would want to see become an actual reality. And there you have it. Some of the smartest, most fascinating and innovative concepts from some of the most exciting few days of CES. And the fact that it was just one concept and three actual products that will be sold soon, making it to this list, it is the most exciting part out of everything else. And you know the part that I really like about CES, there's a lot of innovation and some of it goes over the top into the wild and wacky, different and completely and totally over the top. So there's a smart faucet I'm going to show you. Samsung came out with a TV based on NFT Explorer that's built in. I don't know if it's just gimmicky, but you know, we'll find out. You can browse, purchase and display NFTs that you actually have already bought. So. It's a very, very niche feature. Razer and Fossil collaborated with each other to come out with a special edition of the Fossil Gen 6. It comes with three new watch faces, two different watch bands. Total number of units available is limited to 1,337 units. Let's take a look at all the wacky stuff. While most of the concepts and products at CES are all about solving significant problems, some of them end up being a little too unique, a little too over the top. The tech behind them is amazing, but not always something that sorts out a significant problem and hence they cannot be considered necessary. Here are some of the products and concepts that went over the top. Moen, a company that makes smart bathroom faucets, has developed a gesture-controlled faucet. It uses gestures to control both the temperature and the flow of water coming out of the faucet. They can connect to Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, where the user can ask for a precise temperature of the water and the faucet delivers. While the tech behind this is great, it does not seem any simpler than the classic old ones that we use every day. 
Samsung TVs will come with an NFT explorer on them. A user can browse, purchase or display the art that they like and even learn the history behind a particular NFT and the blockchain metadata before they buy it through this software. NFTs are everywhere today, but this feature at its very core is still extremely niche. Moving on from niche to something that is not, we saw a new smartwatch from Razer and Fossil. Alright, not really all that new. It's a Fossil Gen 6, but it has some small changes made to it since it is being sold in collaboration with Razer. And these small changes are three new watch faces, two watch bands and a limited stock of 1,337 units. The three new watch faces, including one with a chroma RGB wave flowing around, an analog watch face with a Razor logo on it, and another one with time mentioned in a font the same as the Razor logo. This, coupled with the matte black and neon green watch bands, give the Fossil Gen 6 a new look. And it sure is different, but still at the end of the day, this is a Fossil Gen 6 with some aesthetic changes. Not something groundbreaking or new like most of what was seen, just a bit different. So even though CES was bustling with amazing new tech, these were some of the products and concepts that took it too far with tech or being ahead of time or just being different and not necessarily better. That then was our CES special. Lots left over, so we may do another segment or two in the next week or two. So do join me next week. We've got an epic show for you coming up.